Greeting to our YouTube viewers, I am Vansworth McKenzie. This video is about the scramble for the countries of the land of Am to be their colonies of possession that became known as Africa by the various Gentile European colonial powers who sat down and organized this scramble for the land of Am in Berlin, Germany in 1884 AD. From this organized plan, Germany was able to scrape up a vast territory from what became known as East Africa to Southwest Africa. From this scramble, the German who wanted more lands in what became known as Africa to settle many of their German citizens on, to build up a German community with other European settlers that gave birth to the massacre of a tribe of the era who were known as the Oari people of what became known as Namibia of Southwest Africa. These Oari people was in the way of the land era that the German wanted to settle many of their German citizens on. Also, from what the documentary explained, this land of Namibia had diamonds that one could pick up like stones from the soil, with many other minerals that the German people wanted. So the German came up with a plan to wipe off many of these people from the soil of Nomidia and also to take away their capitals for themselves and who see themselves as a new native of the land era that was shared with other European settlers. Also, many of these people were exterminated in the first concentrated camp that was run by German soldiers. According to the documentary, this was the first concentrated camp of Germany before Hitler came into power in Germany, who did establish the second concentrated camp that killed six million Judahites and Benjaminites, who they named as Jews and Jewish people. To show the barbaric mentality of many of these German people, the documentary explained that after the massacre of the various natives, the German cut off many of these people's heads and sent it to Germany to be put in museum and on postcards for scientists to study and to show to the people of Europe that they are a superior people to us Amite people who they name as Negroes, Black people and African people. The sad thing about many of the people in the land of Am and many other Amite people who are scattered around the world through slavery, we were taught to see ourselves in these names and it became a part of our racial identity that is very hard for the average Amite people worldwide to break away from these false names and false identities that was given to us as a people to go by by our conquerors. After the defeat of Germany in the Second World War, Germany lost many of her former colonies in the land of Am to other European colonial conquerors. From what I came to understand from watching this documentary on YouTube, the land of Nomidia is now controlled and ruled by what became known as South Africa that was first known by the Portuguese as Cape of Good Hope. Then came these German Dutch people who are known as the Boers and who call themselves Afrikaans, who established what became known as South Africa. Then came the Germanic French people who did take over South Africa from the Dutch. Later came the British who take over South Africa from the French and the Dutch as their colony. So these European people who see themselves as South African people take over rulership of what became known as Nomidia. They have oppressed and exploited the remainder of these tribal people of the era to live in ghettos and shanty towns, just like how they did to many Judahites and Benjaminites who were living there in Europe, to live in ghettos, who they named as Jews and Jewish people. The funny thing about the story, they have brainwashed many of the remainder of these people in Nomidia to see themselves as the blacks 
of Namibia, and for them to see their European invaders and oppressors as the white people who has them in bondage. It amazed me very much to see the presumptuousness and the arrogant behavior of these Gentile European people of Jephthah, who left from their Gentile line of what became known as Europe, that was taken from Greek mythology to go out and kill and enslave many people just to take away their lands and for whatever the land produced, so as to become rich people that no other people could do in Europe today. But the reason why they have such a power and can do all these things, it is because of the prophecy that is mentioned in Luke chapter 21 verse 24 about the time of the Gentile reign and domination over the earth until they come to the end. They will come to the end just like how the Medes that came from Magdai who was one of the sons of Japheth. Then came Greece who became known as the Greek people and the Romans who came from Aeneas of Troy of the Turkey of Europe and the rest of the various barbarian people who came from out of the end of the Roman Empire and who are ruling the world today. They will also come to the end just like how Rome came to her end. They will also do the same. It's only a matter of time before all these things come to pass as Yahweh so have it written in the scripture. The Spanish, the Portuguese, Dutch, German, French and the British have all done these things because it is of their greedy and wicked nature to get rich and their thirst to shed blood and to take people as captive to live from off their many captive like a parasites. To give one a good example of the wicked and evil nature of these Gentile European people of Jephthah, I was watching a documentary on direct TV about a set of people who came from the land of Goma, who became known today as the Russian people of Europe. These Russian people went to conquer the land that became known today as Alaska from the native Eskimo people who were a Chinese looking people of what became known as today as Asia who were living there. These Russian people went and killed off many of the native of the land and some of these native took up refuge on the mountain top. Somehow the Russian became aware that some of these Eskimo were on the mountain top hiding from them. They took their big cannon guns and blast many of these tribal people to bits who were on the mountain top hiding from them. After the Russian killed off many of these native people, they took over control of the land and later sold the land to the Gentile British people of what became known as the United States. That did become a part of their state of control. According to a statement I have taken from a book that is called Basic English Review while I was attending Columbus Technical for a while. There it is stated in this book that the United States bought Alaska from the Russian in 1867 AD for 7,200,000 for this captured land from the Russian. I also come to the knowledge that when many of the Dutch, French and the British people came to what is known today as North America speaking of what is now known as Canada and the United States of America to take away some of the land era from the Spanish who had the so-called New World all to themselves for over 100 years from other European colonial conquerors. So where many of these other European settlers or colonists as they were called came over, they brought blankets that was infected with smallpox disease and they gave these blankets to many of these natives, many of whom had survived from the brutality of the Spanish and the Portuguese who did not get killed off or who were enslaved to death were given these smallpox blankets. 
The reason why these wicked Gentile European people did these things is because they were open that many of these people who had, who had survived from the slaughtering and enslavement of the Spanish and the Portuguese would become infected with the smallpox disease and die off so that they could easily take away their lands and see themselves as the new native of this captured land. The same is true for the land era that became known as Australia and what became known as New Zealand by Captain James Cook and many of his British colonists, as they were called, who took away the land of Timor that became known as Australia from the Aborigines, who were the native of the land and who now see themselves as the native of what is now known as Australia. Also, the land of the Maoris of what became known as New Zealand and they have appointed themselves as the native of this part of the world and the Pacific. When the British went to take over what is now known as Australia, they enslaved, hung and killed many of the men and they even cut off many of the men's penis so they would bleed slowly to death. As for the women, many of them were raped and spear were pushed up their vaginas so they would slowly bleed to death. They have also corrupted the remainder of these people who did not get slaughtered off with sexual immorality of homosexualism, lesbianism, pornography, liquor, smoking, drugs, prostitution, violence, and the gun to kill more people faster. While I was watching Direct TV, they was explaining and showing of a documentary of how many Gentile European men of Australia would go into the various villages where many of these Aboriginal women were living. They would have sexual intercourse with many of these women. When these women became pregnant and gave birth to many off-breed babies. As soon as these children grew up to be a certain age, the government of Australia made it a law that the European police officer could go into these villages and forcefully take away these off-breed children from their mothers. They would take many of these children to other Gentile European neighborhood where they would be kept in camps that were run by Roman Catholic nuns as the overseer of these camps. The reason why the government of Australia take away these children forcefully from their mothers is because the Gentile European people of Australia have been trying with all sorts of means to eradicate and exterminate many of these dark-skinned people from the soil of Australia in different ways and means and from life itself. Unfortunately, to their surprise, many of these people are still around today, even though they have tried their very best to eradicate many of them from Australia. The idea by them taking away these off-breed children from their mothers and placing them in European neighborhoods they were open that when these children grew up into adulthood, they would melt her back into full-blooded European people of Australia. Many of the darker-skinned natives would no longer be around because they had killed off many of the men so that the population would not keep on reproducing itself as our Yahweh make it to be. This was also an attempt to turn the off-breed people against their darker-skinned brothers and sisters who had survived from the brutality and the wickedness from many of these British settlers who went to their land as strangers and take away their land forcefully. The documentary explained that some of these children even ran away from the camps and walked hundreds of miles back to their mother's villages and many were caught and forcefully returned to their camp under police guard. This is one of the reasons why many of the time when they show the people of Australia on their television, 
they mostly show the Gentile European people of Australia as the natives, and the Aborigines people are really mentioned. The same is true for the Maoris of what is now known as New Zealand of today. Many of these people have become extinct, and if there are any of these people around today, they have become a part of the Gentile European people melting pot of off-breed looking people of New Zealand. The Gentile European people would like to give many people of today the impression who are not knowledgeable about the history of Australia and New Zealand to think that the European people who are there today were the original native of the land. This is because wheresoever the Gentile European people went and conquered as a part of their capture land, they have always seen themselves as the natives of these lands. They give themselves different names such as Canadians, Americans, South Africans, South American people, and what is now known as the Brazilian people. I would like to give an, an, another example of the wicked nature of these Gentile European people of Jeffrey. On April 6, 2014 AD, which was a Sunday morning, I was watching a documentary on the television about a genocide that took place in the German Belgium colony that became known as Rwanda. According to this Gentile European man who was a reporter telling the story of how this genocide developed, he went on to explain that during the time of the conquest and rulership over this country that became known as Rwanda. These Belgian people told one tribe that they were a superior tribe to the other tribe that they did consider as an inferior tribe. The reporter went on to explain that one of the strategy these Belgian people used to spread their division of hatred among the tribe of the era is by telling one tribe they consider as a superior tribe that the other tribe is an inferior tribe to that of the superior tribe and this inferior tribe were a part of the monkey family and this inferior tribe were less intelligent to that of the superior tribe. These German Belgian people also put the tribe they consider as the inferior tribe to work as forced labor of slavery while the superior tribe was given various preferences of opportunities and progress. By this seed of hatred that was planted in the mind and art of these Hamai tribe brought about the genocide that took place in what became known as Rwanda. Because of this devious and evil mentality of these Gentile European people of Jephet that caused 800,000 people to lose their lives who were slaughtered by their neighboring tribe. This little story just goes to show that wheresoever the Gentile people who became known as European people of today went out to conquer, they have always able to put people against each other to suit their own wicked and greedy deeds that is called divide and rule and conquer that's caused disunity and war among many people that the gentile people of europe are very skillful at they have been doing so from the early colonial slavery days of the conquest of people on their lands they have done so in the island of jamaica guyana and many other places of their new world by putting the indian and the chinese people who were taken from Asia as slave and cheap laborers against many of their Amite counterparts who were also taken to these places as slaves. They, have, they the Chinese and the Indian people were given more opportunities to become more successful than their Amite counterpart. This is one of the reasons why many Indian and Chinese people of Jamaica and in other places of their new world are far more well off financially than their Amite counterpart 
because they were given more opportunities to become more successful after slavery was officially abolished by the British. Also, the Indian and the Chinese people of Shen, of Jamaica, and elsewhere are far more unity and togetherness among themselves in comparison to that of many Amite people who do not have any love and unity among themselves in comparison to that of the Indian and the Chinese people of Asia. These Gentile European people of Japheth have also set up different political rulers in the land of Am as puppets to suit their own interests. I was watching a documentary explaining that when the British took over Nigeria, they set up puppet rulers to rule in the interests of Britain and for their and for these politicians own pockets. The French did the same thing that gave birth to a my political ruler by the name of Blair Campari of Burkina Faso, who did rule in the interests of France and in his own pocket, while many of his own people of Burkina Faso are very poor and suffering. So this is one of the reasons why places like Nigeria and other countries in the land of Am, the political rulers are very corrupted and many who rule in the interest of their own pockets to, to live luxuriously while many of the people of Nigeria are poor and suffering. I also want to point out that the Saudi Arabian people of Ishmael who have established the religious belief of Islam from what became known as the so-called Middle East to Nigeria with the sword and the Quran for their own interest have been doing the same thing by using foolish fanatic people like Boko Haram and other Muslim fanatic like Boko Haram who do not have any knowledge and who do not have any care for their own people welfare but who use these foolish, stupid people to spread fear and destruction in the heart and mind of many of their own Amite people of the era for them to become Muslim and to set up a Muslim government in the interest of the Ishmaelite people of what is now known as the Saudi Arabian people. Who, were, who was responsible for the conquest and slavery of spreading Islam from the so-called Middle East to Nigeria with the sword and the Quran to become followers of Muhammad and his religious belief of his God Allah, who many of their converts were taught to believe that this God Allah is the one God of the universe. Many of these foolish Amite political leaders of the land of Am, who were set up by many colonial rulers for their own interests do not have any love and care for their own suffering people. Many of these are my leaders of the land of Am who see themselves as educated people because they went to study in Europe, the United States to learn these people laws of scheming and oppression of their own people. While they drive around in a big Mercedes Benz and have a fat bank account in Swiss Bank and other places and living luxuriously from their own struggling people living in poverty and ignorance. I must point out that education and charity that mean love start at home first, meaning that, that a person must be educated about their own history as a race of people, looking out for the betterment of their own people interests like many other race of people do. Let's take the people of Europe as an example. When I was living in Amsterdam and Denmark in the 60s, many times I went looking for rooms and I would see signs saying in English, European only. The same is true when I went looking for employment. Many times I would see different ones laughing and waving their hands as if to say, we do not want you here. When I put the laughter behind me and go to their office and ask, 
Is there any vacancies? I was told, sorry, you cannot work here. The same is true for a my person who has been waiting for a long time in Denmark or Ireland for a taxi. But as soon as a European person come along, they would get a taxi right away without any problem after wait for a long time. So the Gentile people of Europe, the Chinese and the Indian people of Shem of what became known as Asia, show their charity of love to their own people first. In comparison to many foolish Hamite leaders of the land of Ham, who do not have any love for their own struggling people, but many of whom allow many colonial rulers to use them to get their resources of the land and to keep the rest of their own people down by taking payoff and bribes to be used as puppets so they can drive around in a big Mercedes bent while the rest of their own people are starving and begging for bread. These so-called leaders who claim they are educated because they went to Cambridge, Yale or some school of the United States to study their laws of greed and selfishness, as if to say education was started in Europe among the people of Japheth, when in reality education of reading, writing and arithmetic was started in the land of Am among the people of Am that was spread to Europe. But unfortunately, many people do not know this, and many Amite people feel to themselves that education was started in Europe, so that they had to run away from the motherland, go to Europe to be educated by these same people who we were ed who were educated by us. This is this is really weird. When I was staying in Denmark in 1969 AD. My money ran out and I went to the foreign police in Denmark and explained to them of my situation. I was told by them that I should go to the British Embassy to get help from them because I have a British passport and I have a British citizenship. When I went to the British Embassy and explained to them of the matter, I was told by a lady in the office that they cannot help me because I am not an Englishman. But instead, I must send to get help from some of my relatives who are living there in London or some other relative who are living in Jamaica. But as for them, they cannot help me. When I went back to the foreign police and told them what the embassy said to me, they told me they cannot help me neither and they have a steel hotel for me. And they locked me up as an undesirable alien and finally, I was deported back to London. When I arrived in London, Scotland Yard came to interview me and asked me what have I done in Denmark. I explained to him about the money situation and what the British Embassy told me. I even showed him a recommendation I did receive while I was working at the auto body shop in Amsterdam that I was a very good worker. After that, I was told by Scotland Yard that I am welcome to come back into London. To give another example of the love and togetherness of the Gentile people of Europe, the island of St. Kitts was established as a British colony by Thomas, Wa Thomas Warner in 1623 AD, who was a British colony seeker for his own country of Britain, who came after Sir Walter Raleigh. Thomas Warner was born in Suffolk of Britain. Warner liked Sir Walter Raleigh, who also wanted to get on the bandwagon of greed and scheme to colonize people and their land, to get the riches of the land, and to get rich quickly from the blood, sweat, and tears and life of other people by robbing, stealing, and enslaving. According to History of the West Indian People, Book 2, Warner was among the bodyguard for King James I of Britain, who wanted to venture out in the new world of the Spanish and the Portuguese to set up a British colony in what became known as the country of Guyana. 
This colony that Warner tried to set up in Guyana was a total failure. One of his members of his party, who was known as Thomas Painter, who was an experienced seaman, told Warner that it would be much wiser for him to try to set up a colony on one of the West Indian islands rather than on the mainland that became known as South America and North America, speaking of what is now known today as Canada and the United States as North America. A strapped West Indian people went on to explain that while Warner was on his way back to Britain from the country of Guyana, he visited some of the islands of the West Indies and he decided that the island that Columbus uh, did name as St. Christopher was the most suitable island to set up a British colony. When Warner reached Britain in 1623 AD, he sought to get help at once for his plan to set up a colony on the island of St. Christopher. Merrifield, who was a British merchant, agree agreed to buy a suitable sized ship to load it with food, tools and other necessary things to make life easy for the colonists as they were known in those days. To second down on the island of St. Christopher that became known as St. Kitts to help to establish the island as a British colony. History of the West Indian people explained that when the news reached Britain that the colonists arrived safely on the island of St. Kitts, Jefferson sailed from Britain to join up with the rest of the other British colonies who were already there on the island of St. Kitts. According to history of the West Indian people, the British colonists arrived in St. Kitts in 1624 AD and they were kindly received by the native Caribs who were living there on the island. When the British colonists arrived on the island of St. Kitts, they started to build huts and clear the land to plant corn for food that they did receive from the native Caribs. I must point out that these British settlers who went to the New World of the West Indies did not know anything about the growing of corn for food, but they got the knowledge from the Caribs and from the Arawak people. So Walter Raleigh, where the name Raleigh North Carolina got his name from, was one of the first people who made the smoking of tobacco fashionable in Europe that became known as cigarette of today. The various Amai slaves who the Gentile European people brought over from the land of Am followed the habit of smoking that they had learned and copied from the people of Europe, their many slave masters. According to history of the West Indian people, the first corn and tobacco for Warner and his British settlers in the land of St. Kitts was destroyed by a hurricane along with their various huts. Warner and the British, other British colonists got together and repaired the damaged huts that were damaged by the hurricane. Jefferson arrived from Britain to the island of St. Kitts in 1625 AD and the first crop of tobacco was ready to ship to Britain. Thomas wanted more British colonists to join him on the island of St. Kitts to grow more crops and he also wanted more wealthy British merchants to take part in his venture of the island of St. Kitts. And he also wanted more protection from the King of Britain for his British colonists who, were, who had settled on the island of St. Kitts. Warner went to Britain to seek help from the British government, but King James had died and his son Charles I was made king after the death of his father. Charles welcomed Warner at his palace and made him governor of the island of St. Kitts. While Warner was in Britain, there was no difficulty in him getting any young British farmers from the eastern part of Britain to migrate to the British colony of St. Kitts. 
When Warner and his new recruit returned to the island of St. Kitts, some Frenchmen also came to the island of St. Kitts. These French sailed from France, hoping to establish a French colony somewhere in the West Indies, but their ships were attacked by the Spanish warships, and many of their ships were badly damaged, and some of their men were killed, and some was wounded by the Spanish attack. The British settlers on the native Carib and the island of St. Kitts felt very sorry for these Frenchmen. So they let them settle down on the island of St. Kitts to form a little French community. History of the West Indian people explained that so far the native Carib have been very friendly and cooperative with the Gentile European invaders of their islands. But the Carib people were watching the number of European settlers growing and getting larger on the islands and they became very nervous about it. Moreover, their priests told them that these European invaders were their enemies and in time to come they would drive them away from their island. History of the West Indian people explained that all the Carib on the island of St. Kitts got together with other Caribs from other islands. They planned a surprise attack that was to take place by night on the island of St. Kitts against the Gentile European invaders of their island. This plan of the Carib was that all the Carib from other Caribbean islands nearby were to arrive in their canoe boat and all the European invaders on the island of St. Kitts would be killed. According to history of the West Indian people, there were a Carib lady who was very friendly with many of the European settlers of St. Kitts. So she went and told Warner and other French leaders of the plan that the Carib, Carib planned against them. On the night of the plan attack, when the Carib men thought everything was going according to their plan, they came rushing over for a decisive victory. But they were driven back, leaving behind many of their fellow Carib men killed. In action, many of the Gentile European settlers on the island of St. Kitts who were struck by the poison arrow used by the Carib during the attack died from their wounds. One out with many French settlers decided that they should increase the number of European present on the island of St. Kitts. Warner went back to Britain and brought back another 400 new British settlers to the island of St. Kitts. The French settlers also went to France and brought back 200 more new French settlers to the island of St. Kitts. History of the West Indian people explained that in 1629 AD, Warner went back to Britain and was given the title of a knight by King Charles I. According to the Oxford Dictionary, a man who was given the title of a knight was a young man who took up arms for his country. For this reason, the title of Sir was added to their name. Such was the case of Sir Walter Raleigh. Sir Thomas Warner, Sir Henry Morgan, because they went out and killed people for their lands or whatsoever colonies they did set up for their own land of Britain. When Warner returned back to St. Kitts, he found out that St. Kitts was attacked and destroyed by the Spanish. He struck the West Indian people explained that the Spanish did not want to make any settlements on the various small islands of the West Indies, but they did not want any other European colonists to have control over their islands. On this attack, the Spanish were able to take 600 British settlers as captives, and some was able to escape to their ships and other fled to the mountain. One, I encourage many of his British settlers who had fled to the mountain to return 
to build their damaged homes and plant new crops. While Warner was in Britain, he found out that the tobacco market was no longer the, the hot selling item as the growing of sugar cane to make sugar. So he encourages settlers to plant more sugar cane as well as tobacco crops. History of the West Indian people explained that sugar was selling in Europe for a good price and eventually St. Kitts became one of the richest West Indian islands for the British because of the growing of sugar cane that they the Portuguese had learned from the Amite people of North Africa, the Cape Verde Island and other places of the people of Am in the land of Am. The richness of St. Kitts came from the blood, sweat and tears and life of many of the Amite people who were taken to the island of St. Kitts from the land of Am to work on their sugarcane and tobacco plantation. History of the West Indian people explained that the next disaster to strike St. Kitts came from a hurricane that destroyed houses and plantation and ships that were in the harbor. Some of these ships that were destroyed was fully loaded with tobacco to ship to Europe. Because of the damage of the ship caused the water to be poisoned by the tobacco that fell into the water and many fishes died from the poisoned tobacco water. History of the West Indian people explained that the French part of the island of St. Kitts never fully recovered from the Spanish attack and eventually the French settlers take con control of the island that became known as Martinique and Guadeloupe. The island of St. Kitts became fully under British control in 1713 AD. My reason for going so deep into the history of St. Kitts is to show the unity and togetherness that many of the Gentile European people have in comparison to that of many Amite people who do not have any love and unity among themselves like the people of Europe, the Chinese and the Indian people of Shem of what is now known as Asia do. This is one of the reasons why many people use us Amite people to their own advantage of our many Yahweh gift that he has given to us to benefit. This unity of the British and the French gave the French settlers to control a part of the island of St. Kitts while the British controlled the other part until the French was able to take over other islands of the so-called West Indies as their colonies. I must point out that although these Gentile European people fight and kill each other because of colonial conquest, when the smoke of the gun is over and disappear, they would come together and sign a peace treaty to enjoy their captured lands and the wealth from the land for among themselves. According to volume 14 of the encyclopedia, page 231, in the 15th century AD, Vesco de Gama, who was a Portuguese man, sailed from, Cape, from the Cape of Good Hope, that is now known as Southwest Africa, into the East Indian water to make the Portuguese master of all Asia and all the eastern seas of their conquest. According to volume 14 of the Encyclopedia Britannica, Indonesia was first established as a European colony by the Portuguese in 1510 AD. During the pursuit for world conquest and domination for people and their lands, they were later followed by the Spanish, Dutch, French, and later came the British to Indonesia to take part of the colonial action like a set of conquering predators. According to volume 17 of the Encyclopedia, 
The islands of Indonesia were formerly called as the Netherlands or the Dutch East Indies and the geographical land era eventually take on the name as Indonesia that was given to it by a German geographer in 1884 AD. Volume 6 of the encyclopedia explained that the various European conquerors that went to the island of Indonesia were able to control the land by turning the local rulers against each other. This they did by using religious means to cause division and war. Then they would come in as peacemakers to establish peace between the local tribes fighting among themselves over religious wars. Eventually, they would take over control as colonial rulers without even had to fire a shot or to use their sword to conquer. This technique is what is called divide and conquer in, what, in which many of the people of the Gentile land that became known as Europe are very skillful at. The British after the rulership of the Greeks and the Portuguese were able to divide the land of Bharat that became known as India into three separate states of government that became known as India, Pakistan and Bangladesh and having these people fighting among themselves over religious wars. To give another example of the wicked and greedy nature of these Gentile European people of Jephthah, I had purchased a video from Amazon that is called White King Red Rubber Black Death of the Congo that was conquered and ruled by a Germanic Belgium king who was known as Leopold II, who put a lot of pressure and wickedness upon the people of the Congo for them to send a lot of rubber product to Belgium for him to become a very rich man. King Leopold had his soldiers that was also make up of some Hamite men from the Congo who went about shooting and burning people homes to send fear in the people mind of the Congo so they would produce more rubber to, to send to Belgium. Many of the people of the Congo, both grown up, children and women, hands, foot and palm of people hands were cut off to force them to send more rubber product to, to Belgium for Leopold to become a rich man. Many pregnant women and other women with children were put in prison with rope tied around their necks to force their men or their husband to produce more rubber to send to Belgium. The funny thing about this story, King Leopold and his soldiers used many foolish, stupid Hamite men of the Congo who was a part of his army to beat and kill many of their Hamite people, including cutting off people's hands and foot, to please Leopold and his European army, army men, to show of their loyalty to the, to the army. I also saw in this video of the Congo, many of Leopold Hamite soldiers tie their fellow Hamite native brother foot and hands with their shirt off their backs with their face down to the ground and their backs exposed. They stressed them out, beating them with whips that were made from rhino's hide. Just to please their Belgium officer to show how loyal they were to their army of Leopold. As I've mentioned before, that many Amite people are suffering from colonial and slavery mentality and stupidity and ignorance that affect many of our Amai people, mind and life, even till today. I must point out that this kind of situation would not happen if it was with the Gentile people of Europe, the Chinese or the Indian people of Asia. They would, they would join together and fight against their oppressors and slave masters. 
Many of these foolish Amite men of the Congo is not as smart as their Amite slave brothers of the island of Jamaica who had run away from the Spanish their slave masters, leaving them to fight against the British by themselves. My reason for saying this is this. During the 1600 AD, when the British came to take away the island of Jamaica from the Spanish, there the Spanish armed their Amite slave with guns to fight on their behalf against the British, their brothers. These Amite men were so smart that when they received these guns, they took off up to the cockpit mountain of Jamaica and leave the British and the Spanish to fight among themselves. After these Amite men run away up to the cockpit mountain, they were given the name by the Spanish as the Maroons, which means runaway slave, according to the Webster Dictionary. According to this documentary, this story came to light because of some British missionary, as they see themselves, who were in the Congo and observed the cruelty of the army of Leopold men to pressure the people of the Congo to produce more rubber. After the death of Leopold, the country of Congo became an official colony of Belgium government, producing gold, diamond, rubber, and other items to ship to Belgium to make these Germanic people of the country of Belgium into a very rich country of Europe. This just go to show the foolish mentality of many Amite people that the Gentile people use to their own advantage and gain. According to volume 8 of the Encyclopedia, page 270, the country that became known as Liberia was established during the administration of a United States president by the name of James Monroe, from where the capital city of Liberia got its name by the American Colonization Society. This colony was known as Providence Island that was located at the very mouth of the Mazara River. According to volume 70 of the Encyclopedia Britannica, page 331, they would explain that many free slaves was returned from what became known as North America by the British colonial settlers in 1830-1887 AD, speaking of what is now known as the United States and Canada as North America to what became known as Freetown, Liberia. This settlement of Liberia was established as a home for the return of free slaves of the American society in 1816-1821-1822 AD by Jehudi Ashmohan, who was a Methodist minister. He eventually became the director of this settlement of the, of the colony that became known as Liberia in 1824 AD. And the principal settlement became known as Monrova after the name of James Monroe. According to the same volume 7 of the Encyclopedia, Joseph Robert of Liberia, who the Encyclopedia described as a non white, referring to his false identity of the so called white people, was the first governor to declare Liberia as an independent state in 1847 AD. Joseph Robert also expanded the border of Liberia and who also worked to end the illegal slave trade that was still taking place there in the West African course. According to the encyclopedia, there were border disputes between the British and the French to control the land of Liberia. This border dispute lasted until 1892 AD when a treaty was established between the British and the French and the French was able to control 2,000 square miles of the land area of Liberia as a part of their colony era. 
the story of another part of the land of Am that became known as Freedom Town, Sierra Leone, according to volume 10 of the encyclopedia, page 790. The land era of what became known as Sierra Leone was first visited by the Portuguese in 1495 AD on the modern side where they did build a fort that later became known as Freetown. During the 15th century AD, Sierra Leone was visited by various European powers for slave and for ivory. So these European people have been killing off the elephant for a long time to get their ivory and are still doing, this, doing so today by using various people to achieve their ob objective. The encyclopedia explained that although the British did build trading posts along an area that was known as Bonn and York Island in the 17th century AD, no official European settlement was made in Sierra Leone until 1787 AD after the abolishment of the slave trade by the British in January of 1808 AD. Yet slavery did continue in many parts of the Gentile European New World of U and Europe as well as the land of Am itself. According to what I have gathered reading from volume 10 of the encyclopedia, a private establish, establishment was set up for the return of free slaves to recycle in what became known as Sierra Leone. After the British government made the slave trade illegal, the government of Britain took over the era of Sierra Leone as a naval base for their operation against uh, the slave traders and in 1803 AD, the coastal era of Sierra Leone became a British settlement and a British colony. I must point out that I cannot say for sure how the name Sierra Leone came about, but I do believe the name came from the French. I would like to point out that all the modern names of the countries of the land of Am that one might see on the modern world map of today were given by various colonial conquerors and rulers that scrape up the land of Am and its people to be their colony of possession of their empire. According to volume 5 of the encyclopedia, page 759, the island that became known as Hawaii was first visited by Captain James Cook, who was a British man who was the first European conqueror to set foot on the island that he named as the Sandwich Island. According to the encyclopedia, in 1796, Kami Ami Amiya I was the ruler of the Hawaiian island, which at the time was known as the Sandwich Island that was named so by Captain James Cook, who had named the island as the Sandwich Island when he first landed on the island in 1778 AD. According to the account that was told, in 1820 AD, the first missionaries who left from New England of the United States to go and Christianize these native of Hawaii with their philosophy of what is called as Christianity of Roman paganism of the Catholic Church. After these missionaries, the island of Hawaii started to take on a European culture of their corruption that they had introduced to the mind of these people, that they also become corrupted by these people. A constitution of law was given by the United States and Great Britain to the Hawaiian people and in 1840 AD, the island and kingdom of Hawaii was granted independence by the United States, Britain and France. But after the independence was granted, 
Britain and France continue to interfere with the governing of the island and the island was placed under the care of the United States and the island became a colony of the United States. However, I was watching a documentary on the television about the history of how the island of Hawaii became a colony and state of the United States. The television documentary tell a total different story from what I read from the encyclopedia. According to the television documentary, it was some men who left from the United States and dethroned the queen who was ruling over the island of Hawaii at the time. And the island became a colony of the United States after the dethronement of the queen. From what I have read and come to understand, the original people of the island of Hawaii were a dark-skinned people from Tahiti. Tahiti is near the Aborigines island of Australia that is now controlled by the people of Europe as their colony. I would like to say that one of the reasons why many of the people of Am throughout the world cannot come together as one it is because we as a people were given different nationalities, passports and flags of the various island and slave country we were born and raised in. As our identity by the various Gentile European families who had control over our life. We were indoctrinated by them to see ourselves as a part of them instead of seeing ourselves belonging to each other as a racial family of Am. Many of the people of Am who were also conquered and enslaved by the Mohammedans have learned their language and custom and have also adapted to their ways of living. Also many Amai people who see themselves as a part of the Mohammedan family of conquered people. It is because they have no knowledge of who they are and where they are coming from and how they became known as the Muslim and Arab people of today. I would like to point out to many of our Amai people of today that if a person do not know of their past history then it is very hard for them to be able to understand the present time of today because the past history guides today history. This means that whatever happened two or five hundred years ago is still have its effect on our world and life of today. Because yesterday's doing guides today's doing and today's doing guides tomorrow's doing. The trend of life would continue this way unless of course Yahweh changed the course of life from the way it has been set up by the conquerors but for most part life would continue on from the way it has been from the, whatever conqueror came on the scene and set up their own system of things. Furthermore, without our children receiving the proper knowledge of our past, it would make it very difficult for them to understand the real reason why things are the way it is in our present world of today. Without knowledge of our past history to guide us from making the same mistake over and over again, we will be always trusting the same people who have seek to destroy us as a race of people for centuries. And this is the reality with today and with many Amite people of Am worldwide. Because we have no knowledge of who we are. This is the same mistake many of the people of Am have been making since the time of slavery until now. We the people of Am have been putting our trust and hope in the Gentile people of Europe. Looking to these people and the Mohammedan people of Saudi Arabia for help, who has enslaved us and have taken away all our belongings and our lands for themselves. Many of the Mohammedan and Muslim people of Saudi Arabia has helped to destroy many of the early civilization of the people of Am. But many of my people of today in the land of Am have no knowledge of this. 
Many of my people of today are only going by the lies and the false history and false identities that were given to us as a people to go by, by our conquerors and slave masters for us to see ourselves in whatever identities they gave us to go by. The people of Am keep on looking to the same Gentile European people and the Mohammedan Muslim people of Saudi Arabia to better their standard of living and to create job opportunity and educational opportunity for us as a people. These are the same people who have caused our downfall of yesterday and today. In my opinion, going to the Gentile people of Europe and the Mohammedan people of Saudi Arabia for help is like going to the jungle of the land of Am and going to the lion, the tigers and the snakes for guidance. This is the same mistake many Amite people have been making over the centuries, simply because many of us and our so-called leaders do not have any knowledge or memory of our historical past of yesterday. If we were people like many, who, many others who keep on teaching our children about their past history that our ancestors before us went through, at least this education would have received from their parent would keep on serve as a guideline which would pass down the line to the next generation that is to come. The Gentile people make sure they keep up with their history and past events and they teach these things to their children that the average young Gentile ch children of the United States, Canada, South Africa, Australia and Europe will be very knowledgeable about their ancestors past that caused them to be. The Gentile people teach their children of the various things that their ancestors of yesterday have done to us, Amite people and other native people that they have enslaved, killed and take away their lands for themselves that brought about the wealth of their descendant of today to benefit from. Due to the various doing of their ancestors of yesterday that they have done to many people of the world, it has put their offspring of today in the position to reap the harvest of their ancestor doing of yesterday. Many Gentile people of Europe and their descendants of today know more about the Amite people history more than most Amite people know about their own history. To give one a good idea of how one history is very important to a race of people. If one should read the scripture book of Joshua chapter 4 and verse 2 to verse 7, there one will see that when the children of Israel were about to cross over the Jordan River, when they came from out of the land of misery to go and take over the land of Canaan, now known today as Israel and Saudi Arabia. At verse 2, there Yahweh commanded Joshua that he must take out twelve men from out of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. And Joshua must command these men of the children of Israel to take out twelve st stones out of the Jordan River. These stones that were to be taken from out of the Jordan River should be kept as a historical record of memory forever. This was done so that the future children of Israel who were to come along later would know that the river Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh and that the children of Israel crossed over and dry land to go and take over the land of the Canaanite people. This little history just goes to show to many of our foolish Amite people of today who believe to themselves that their historical past is not important in today's time because it is past history. Even the Gentile people of what became known as the United States has several history channels on their various television stations to show many of their captive people of today historical things they do not know about. Also to show to them things that they have done to many other race of people 
during their colonial conquest of the world of people and their lands. I would love to encourage many of my people of the United States that they must not only think of the United States as their own land, but they must also think of the land of um, the land of their ancestors as their own land too. My reason for making this kind of statement is this: if there should be a famine for food and water in the United States, the my people of the United States are the one who will suffer the most. They would not be able to go into their Gentile European people neighborhood with their intention they are going there to look for food and water from these people who do not have any love for them and who have control over all the things of the United States. Many of the Gentile people of their neighborhood would literally take their guns and shoot down many of these Amite people like birds for being so presumptuous to come into their neighborhood looking for food and water that they want for themselves. Also, in their eyes, they would think that these Amite people, who they name as black people, have the audacity to come into their neighborhood where they are not welcome and are not wanted in the first place. If many of these Amai people of the United States were living in the land of Am among their own people and there should be a famine, I'm quite sure they could go into any of their Amai people neighborhood to look for food and water without any problem and anyone getting killed. In comparison to what it would be like if this kind of situation was to take place here in the United States and in other European rural societies, where many of us find ourselves living and call home. I'm quite sure if this situation was to take place in the land of Am, living among their own people, they would share whatever little food and water they have with, with them without any problem and anyone getting killed. In comparison to what it would be like if there should be such a dilemma as what I had mentioned above, if it was to take place here in the United States. Also, many of my people of the United States need to realize that the only way they can have something to eat and drink, and that is if they have the money to go down to the various round Gentile European supermarket to buy what they need to eat and drink. Otherwise, they will literally starve to death. The way the system of the United States was set up, it was not set up to benefit many of their free slave Hamite people of today, because the system was set up was not set up for them to grow their own food. They need to eat and survive. The way the system of the United States was set up, it was set up for their many Gentile European farmers to grow the food and send it to their European run supermarket so that they and their free slave people can go and buy their food they need to eat if they have the money to do so otherwise they would not be able to eat many of the time the prices of these food kinds are so expensive that the average poor am I person can hardly afford to buy the necessary food they need to eat and survive because of the greed of these gentile european people to gain more wealth and to bring in more profit. If many of these poor Amite people of the United States were living in the land of Am among their own people, they would be free to grow their own food they need to eat and live without any problem. In comparison to that of the United States, where the food is mostly grown by the Gentile European farmers to sell to the general public. I'm quite sure they would be able to survive with the help of Yahweh sending rain from above without any problem and anyone going to jail for planting their own food without having any permits or license from the city where they are living to do so as how it is in the, in the United States. Also, if many Amite people of the United States were living in the land of Am among their own people, I'm quite sure 
Many of them would be a far freer people. Without all the pressures and red tapes, I have seen many Amite people of the United States have to go through on a daily scale living in the United States. They would be free to live wherever they want to live without any various exploitation of pressure that I have seen many Amite people of the United States have to go through to survive and live in the best way they can in a system that is against them. As the saying goes, there is no place like home where one can sit down under his or her own fig tree or his or her own vineyard living amongst their own people where one can feel a little bit more relaxed and don't have to worry about the pressure living in the Gentile European run system of the United States where it is mostly catered to their own people benefit of exploitation to bring in more wealth into their system. I was watching a direct TV and on the History Channel and they were explaining that back in the 1800 AD many of the Gentile European dock companies who did use Amite workers on their dock site they would give them cocaine drugs to make them work faster. Their reason for doing so was to make them work faster to make to bring in more profit from their labors. After these Amite dock workers got hooked on the cocaine habit, it spread to their neighborhood and many of these drug users began to attack Gentile people because of their drug habits and their condition of poverty. The news reporter explained that the police had to get special bullet made that was designed to penetrate and kill many of these drug users who became violent against other European people of the United States. This little story just go to show how many Gentile European people of what became known as the United States sit down and plan how to go about destroying many of their free slave Amite people of today who they want to get rid of from their system that they did establish through slavery and colonialism. I would like to point out to many of my Amite people of the West Indies and in the land of farm itself that depend upon tourism <coughs> industry as a way to make a living, such as the airline resort, restaurants that were set up by the gentle European people to make big, big money, also to further their knowledge and experience of other people culture and to pass on their corruption to the mind of other people who have adopted themselves to the gentile European people ways of life. Although tourism is good in one form in bringing foreign currency into many of the islands of the Caribbean and in the land of Am itself that many people rely on to make a living as well as business places to make money. Yet many Amite people of the various islands and of the West Indies and in the land of Am itself need to realize to themselves that tourism is another way to help to corrupt many of our people mind with prostitution, homosexualism, lesbianism, drugs, the glory of the gun to kill more people faster and many more evil that tourism of the Gentile European people spread to many of these places. But many of our people do not realize these things but they are only looking from the money point of view. Many of my people may not agree with me that tourism helped to spread corruption and ill nature that come with tourism because of the glory of the wealth that come from tourism. When I was growing up in Jamaica, homosexualism and lesbianism was hardly heard of. But I got to the understanding that homosexualism and lesbianism is a common thing in the island of Jamaica today because of tourism of the gentile people of Europe and their lifestyle that they have introduced to other people. The sad thing about it, as the saying goes, monkey see and monkey do, meaning people love to follow after other people doing, especially when it comes down to money is involved. Although 
prostitution was in the island of Jamaica in my growing up days because it came down from the slavery colonial days from the people of Europe to their colonies and slave people that were under their control that they have adopted these things from these people because it was a way of life in Europe also to give another example of, of tourism I was watching a documentary on television about the country of Kenya of, men, of all many tourist men who left from Europe and the United States and go to Kenya as tourists where they have little children as prostitutes on the beaches of Kenya because many of these little children come from poor homes and poor, poor parents so they use these poor children to get their pleasure because they have the money power they get away with these things and go back to Europe and the United States and the government of Kenya do nothing about it because it will affect their tourist business I've also seen similar do documentary about the island of the Philippines where many men left from Europe United States and Australia and go to the Philippines where they have child prostitute from the age of 6 to 15 year old because many of these child prostitute come from poor homes so these men get their pleasure from these poor children it is stated in 1 Timothy chapter 6 reading from verse 7 to verse 10 there it mentioned for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we cannot carry anything out of this world but having food and clothing let us be con their content therewith but they that will be rich fall into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown many people into destruction from Yahweh verse 10 went on to say for the love of money is the root of all evil so because of this love uh, for tourist money in the island of Jamaica and other islands of the Caribbean the land of Am and in other places and it have brought many problems such as HIV and all kind of sexual diseases and also with homosexuals, lesbianism, prostitution and finally destruction from Yahweh as he did to Sodom and Gomorrah of a city that was in the land of Canaan that Yahweh destroyed for their un Yahweh lifestyle that was translated as ungodliness so it will be like in today's time living according to these people corruption and evil ways of life that people adapt themselves to the land of Am have all sorts of natural resources that we as Amite people should try to de develop for ourselves rather than to depend upon tourism to make a living many of these foolish politicians of the land of Am who see themselves as leaders of their own people should open up the door and encourage many of their brothers and sisters who were taken from the land of Am and scattered around the globe to encourage them to return to help to build up the land of Am for our own benefit so we could in employ many of our own people to find job among their own people to build up their standard of living like the Chinese and the Indian people of Shem do many of whom were former slave colonies of Europe I have I have also as I've said as I've stated that charity mean love start at home first meaning that we should love and look out for our own self to build up our own system of things with the help of Yahweh to better our own people's standard of living not like the country of Ethiopia who are encouraging outsiders investors to come and take over their own people land that they should be trying to develop for themselves this is situation would not happen in Europe or China or India where the government would not encourage foreigners to come and take over their own people land but 
But the people of Europe, the Chinese and the Indian people of Shem, of Asia, are not as foolish like many politicians of the land of Am, who see themselves as leaders of their own people, but, but who are about their own pockets and their own bank accounts. Thank you YouTube for allowing me to express this video about many things I have discussed about the, the people of Am and many history that was went by that govern our life today. But these things are very important because as I've mentioned before, many of my people of Am are not very knowledgeable about these things. They take life for what it appears today. And sad to say, sad to say that many people don't realize, as I've said, yesterday's doing guys today are doing and today's doing guys tomorrow are doing so it's very important for one to keep up with the knowledge of the history from past event to our present time that we guys tomorrow are doing and to our children children after thank you again take care